But that idea of conversation, one of the things that some of us have seen is this bifurcation in departments and schools between the qualitative and the quantitative side. And do you see that in different departments, schools here? And is that a division? I was going to say, as I my comments earlier indicated, there is a kind of division. There is a, a frankly, I think, a lip service to uh, the applicability of qualitative methods uh, in political science, uh, but we've never, ever uh, had a requirement that uh, qualitative methods uh, be uh, a tool. Uh, in fact, it's, it's always been uh, it's always been uh, st statistical techniques and. What our students especially like to do, the good ones, I think, is uh, go and take David's course rather than our course, uh, because it's always more interesting. <laughs> but we do have a, there is that some, uh, I, uh, for quite a number of years, uh, would hold what's called a perestroika uh, reception. <laughs> <laughs> and within political science, there's a perestroika movement, which, which is a movement of people who uh, feel that the hegemony of uh, quantitative techniques in the discipline ought to be uh, uh, counterbalanced by the use of qualitative techniques. And those of us, like myself, who go out in different parts of the world and do studies, I, I mean, if, if, if I run regression, no, I need to be able to talk to people. I need to be able to do a variety of the kinds of tools I know in, in SBOS that they teach. Our students who want qualitative tools go to SBOS. They can't get them in our program. So, so, so there is that uh, sort of tension, uh, I, I think, in, in, in our program. I think, uh, now that I've had a year and a half as transdisciplinary um, director, it is clear to me now that I've met all the eight schools who understand their work better, that there is a real divide on campus between the qualitative and quantitative. Now I'm calling them quantitative and non-quantitative. <laughs> it just seems like it's a little uh, less divisive. And uh, I do feel that there have been some fairly strong controversies over uh, uh, which is the better methodology. And uh, my position is it's not either or, it's both and. And that I think both spheres currently suffer mightily from not taking the other sphere into account. I'd like to, to second and underscore that. Uh, I teach quantitative methods. I have always believed in things, not just lip service, that you need both in research. I've always, built, some of the people here who are in my classes will recall me saying this, my saying this. It's, um, you need both. I think it's usually a meaningless debate. There are two different ways to access knowledge. Um, if you look at dissertations where I've been shared, you'll see that almost always I insist a student do both quantitative and use both quantitative and qualitative methods. Some of the most intriguing studies have been when people ventured far from their traditional fields, when a qualitative person adds uh, insights to a discussion that's been largely quantitative. And I'm thinking right now of an example in the other direction. Uh, Frederick Mosteller, who was a leading statistician and passed away a couple of months ago, uh, published what I found to be a fascinating article using a statistical technique called discriminant function analysis in which he claimed he could fairly well tell who the authors were of the disputed Federalist Papers. So that's an example in the other direction, using word counts, word frequencies, and so forth. Yeah. Uh, but, and there are articles <coughs> in the other direction um, um, some of the greatest insights about how people learn mathematics came from qualitative research 